Okay, so just going to show you now how you can get the Neo4j database downloaded and installed on your computer. It's actually quite a simple process, it doesn't take too long. So we pop over to neo4j.com. Obviously, we want to download it. So now we go to the download page and we'll see we've got two options here enterprise and community. Uh, so let's go with the community edition. And that's downloading. It'll just take a few minutes. It's uh, about a 50 meg download. Boom. And we want download Java for developers. Here we go. The JDK, the latest version is version 8. That's exactly what we want. Um, accept the license agreement and I'm on a max so I want this version 221 megabytes but uh, yeah it shouldn't take too long to download meanwhile what we can do is uh, go to our download directory where we downloaded the Neo4j and uh, have a look at that so I've already downloaded it into this directory you can see it's our Neo4j community 2-2-1 um, so if we just go in there take a look at see what's in there you'll see there's, there's actually not very much in there if we want to get our uh, our Neo4j server up and running we need to do that inside the bin directory so I'll just show you that and what we're going to do is run neo for J start but we can't actually do that just yet we do need to fix our Java environment version first so let's just go and check on that download okay so now that that's downloaded it is just a DMG file so we're just gonna launch that and double click that's it quick easy done close close that and now we go back to our terminal like I said before we start this we need to actually tell the Mac now where that latest version of Java is so we, we're gonna make sure that it, it uses that so just take a new tab um, and the way we do that is just by modifying our path so we want to type export java home equals to and then we're going to use a couple of back ticks here libexec Dash v for version v1 point and I downloaded version uh, 1.8 and that's it that's just going to tell the, the Mac now that when it's doing stuff the command line it's got to use that latest version of Java that we downloaded don't worry about that so now if we go back to Neo4j run our neo4j start command here there we go waiting for server to be ready okay it's up and running so if we just go back to our browser now and here we go this is the neo4j default browser that you get when you first play about uh, just get rid of that so the first thing it's asking us to do is connect um, by default then you see here that the the out of the box username and password is just neo4j and we'll connect and straight away a little bit of good security it's asking us to update that password so for now I'm just going to use demo and demo 
and that's us. So here we are in the, the start procession. You see, it, it gives you a, a little bash terminal up here, and this is where you can run your queries against the Neo4j database on your local server. Um, as you scroll down, then you can see that things that you that are run up here get shown in these panels down below. Got some tutorials here that you can run into, and some Cypher query language examples, or you can even monitor how the the local uh, database is doing. In our left hand navigation here, you'll see a couple of different options. This one just tells us about the database, where it is on our uh, local machine. It is stored in a local file here, this GraphDB file. What property labels and keys exist? Um, so obviously there's nothing in here yet. You've got favorite queries. So you can actually save your favorite queries, something that, that took you a long time to run. You can use the little star icon to save it. And uh, as well as that, I'll actually show you some example stuff in here as well. And then you've got some general information. And these guides then, and example graphs, uh, if it's your first time playing about with Neo4j, I definitely recommend you have a look at these couple of examples. They are very, very good and they're just well walked through on the system. So, if, in fact, if we just show you the, the movie graph, for example, um, you can see here this just extra panel appears and it'll walk you through all the different uh, steps and examples in this movie graph. Very, very worthwhile having a play about with that. It'll really help bring it uh, into focus for you. So, how do we actually write a query against the neo 4 database? We do it in this little bash shell. Um, we're just going to do match n, return n as a very simple get everything that's in the database. Now we haven't actually put anything in there, so it should give us no results. We press the play button and the results appear on a new panel. Boom, no rows, just as we expected. Uh, one of the first things we might want to do is create something. So we can create uh, Tim as a person. Full name, Tim Swan. And we can run that. And you can see that it's added one label, one node, and set a property. And if you remember, we had extra information up here. We can go back and have a look. And you can see that there is a node, and it has a label of type person. And the property key of full name is ex in existence now. So if we go back, when we, we tried to get everything here, we can rerun that query simply by clicking on it. I'll just close that and get it out of the way. And run that one now. And you can see there we have a person, an entity has been created. Okay, so we've created a single node, but the whole point of graph database is to have multiple nodes with relationships between them. So how do we create a relationship between two nodes? Let's take a look. We're going to create another person. We're going to call this one Bruce. Uh, and give him some extra information. Uh, oops. And he's going to be related to somebody else. And the relationship type can be enemy off. And it's a directional relationship, so we're actually showing he is the enemy of this next entity. And this two is going to be another person. This one is Joker. And we go Liam. Joker. Um, and we'll give him nature villain. And let's run that. And here we've added two labels, created two new nodes, and uh, one relationship created. So again, if we go back to our sidebar, you can see we still have the label of person. We still have the property key of full name, but now we have this new property key, nature. 
and we do have a relationship type created in a mail off. If we look at our favourite queries again, we had one, get some data, let's run that, which just does that match end return end, shows everything you've got. And here then we have Joker is an enemy of Bruce Wayne. And you see this, this lovely little visualisation tool that you get with the uh, Neo4j database. Uh, I'm still floating out here all on my own. I got no relationship to anybody in the graph. Okay, so that first note that I put in as an example, me, we, we, we want to delete. Just show you how to do a, a simple match and how to do a delete. So we've got to select that node first. We use the match statement for that. Uh, match T of type person with the full name of type swan. And we don't want to return that, we just want to delete it. So delete T. That should match this entity and delete it. And there we go, deleted one node, statement executed. And uh, we can rerun this query. And now you can see, gone. So the only two entities are Bruce Wayne and the Joker. Okay, so one of the other common tasks we might want to run on our database is that we might want to modify or add some of the properties of a node. So here we have Bruce Wayne, hero named Batman. We might want to give him some extra properties. So how do we actually do that? Well, first we have to grab him out of our, our database. We have to perform a match. Um, so let's match B for Bruce. He's a person. Um, and we're going to match him on full name Bruce Wayne. So, uh, Full name, Bruce Wayne. So now that we've got him matched, we can work with him uh, and add new properties. So we set, and again we're using B for Bruce, and we'll go, uh, we'll add a new, a new key, a new property, and we'll call it superpower. Of course, Batman's superpower is quite simply money run that and there we go we'll set a new property um, and if we just run the get everything again we can have a look so here is Batman and the Joker and when we hover over them you can see there at the bottom then that the, the superpower money property has been added okay so our graphs looking a little bit empty Another thing you might want to do is to add relationships between nodes that already exist within your graph. And we haven't actually covered that yet, so uh, first we're going to need to add yet another entity. So let's just create another another villain for our Bruce Wayne character. So this time we'll go with uh, uh, I, create person, full name, Poison Ivy. That's just a very basic node then. We'll uh, create that. And just run the get everything again, just to, to make sure. So there's Poison Ivy floating around there with no connection. So let's create a relationship between these two nodes that already exist. Uh, first, then, we obviously need to, to match the two entities that we want to join. So we want to match, uh, start with Bruce. Match B colon person, and we're going to match on the key of full name. Bruce Wayne, comma, I of type person, and again we're going to match on that full name key. Ivy. Then we're going to quite simply create the relationship. So create relationship from B. And the relationship is going to be enemy off, just the same as with the Joker. And it's directional towards Poison Ivy. Run that. And you can see we've created one relationship. So now if we rerun this,
there we go. So Batman now has two enemies. <laughs>